Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to the Train Aid HQ. My name is Nick, and in today's video, we are looking at behavior management within teaching and training. So, the purpose of this video is to give you lots of help and advice for any teacher, any trainer regarding uh, behavior management and how to, to promote a cohesive teaching and learning atmosphere as well. So this video, we are going to be talking about uh, teaching and how to promote this cohesive, supportive atmosphere. Um, if you do have any questions about getting involved within teaching, uh, we do offer a range of teaching qualifications uh, focusing at the level three awards in education and training level four certificate and level five diploma so if after watching this video you have any questions please do get in contact uh, we can answer any questions about uh, a career within teaching and training um, furthermore um, please do also look at uh, teaching websites uh, such as TES Jobs, Guardian Jobs, and also Read Education as well for the latest job alerts uh, with teaching and training. So in today's video, uh, we are going to look at 30 uh, different ways that you as a teacher can promote uh, a cohesive atmosphere with your learners. We're going to be looking at ways that you can improve your behavior management skills. So myself, I've worked in many six forms and schools, and these are my 30 recommended rules. And they apply to all sectors, whether you teach primary, secondary, further education, and also the private training sector. So if you work perhaps within a company, all of these rules apply. OK, so there are 30 rules that we're going to be talking through and we're going to give you lots of help and advice. OK, number one, let's jump straight in. We have setting ground rules. Now, these are the non-negotiable ground rules. So these are the rules that you set as a teacher and they are clear boundaries and barriers for learners to adhere to. So these are vital rules. These are non-negotiable that you set out as a teacher. So rules such as health and safety, wearing PPE, protective equipment. Um, other rules could be punctuality, promoting equality and diversity, perhaps a coursework or homework deadlines. All of those are vital rules that learners have no say. OK, these are vital rules. So my advice is within your classroom, you have the set uh, perhaps as a, a poster on your wall. OK, you can, of course, remind uh, learners about these rules on a regular basis, but they are set out uh, clear for everyone to see. And it's vital that you let your learners know straight from the off that these are non-negotiable rules. There's going to be no engagement no questions from learners okay these are a hundred percent facts so be really confident and of course get to know your your ground rules okay your non-negotiables so my uh tips for this uh this rule is to of course perhaps read your staff handbook make sure that you are confident uh with your ground rules as well you can of course um have rules which you can create such as a hands up rule okay uh, perhaps leaving the area tidy, of course, but please do set your non-negotiables, your absolute ground rules. And these could be set by your company or an awarding body as well. So that's my first uh, rule straight away. OK, my second uh, advice, OK, is a little bit lighter. This is to greet learners at the door. OK, so regardless of the time of day, um, you should be stood, okay, to welcome um, your learners to your lesson, okay? So please be there with a smile on your face, okay? Look at learners uh, in the eye. So eye contact, of course, is important here. Be positive, have an open, positive body language stance, okay? And greet your learners, ask them how they're doing, how's their day so far? OK, address them by name as they walk through the door. OK, so this is a positive teacher greeting your learner uh, regardless of the of the day. 
Okay, it could be a morning, Monday uh, morning, for example, Friday afternoon. And this is showing consistency. You're showing that you're interested in them and they are going to be surprised. They're going to thank you, actually, for, for being so welcoming. Um, so that is something which is, of course, going to start your lesson on a positive note, greeting them by the door. OK, it's a very powerful message and I think one that you should definitely adhere to. So that's my second uh, piece of advice there on creating a cohesive atmosphere. My third uh, rule is, of course, to have high standards and have high expectations as a teacher. OK, this is going to help learners to, to keep on track with their course or their progress. And it's important that we do push learners to achieve beyond their perceived capabilities. You're going to help learners to stay task focused if you have high expectations and have high standards. If you are going to be quite a challenging teacher, you're setting challenging tasks, this is a good thing. And of course, some learners may not succeed with the, with the task in hand. OK, um, but it's a learning experience. They can learn perhaps from their mistakes. OK, so they can do um, they can achieve tasks uh, better within the next attempt. OK, it's important to set challenging tasks rather than easy tasks. If learners are completing easy tasks, then they can, of course, become disengaged and lack that can lead to, to misbehavior, distracting other learners as well. So my advice here is to set challenging tasks for learners to achieve, okay? You can, of course, use peer feedback to support with the flow of the lesson, perhaps paired tasks as well. And of course, have set time uh, focused tasks as well. So have time based challenges, um, your lessons can, of course, have pace. That's very important as well. But my ultimate advice here is to set, have and also have high standards and ex expectations as well. OK. The next uh, criteria or, or advice really with promoting um, a good classroom environment, which is focused on um, ideal behavior management is to have a starter activity. Now, a starter activity should be laid out on the desk. So when learners come into the classroom, they may be talking with their friends, but as soon as they sit, uh, sit down, they're going to be interested in this starter activity. So what's in front of them on the desk? This could be um, a recap test. It could be a crossword puzzle. It could be a multiple choice test. But by having something in front of them, them is going to take their attention away from talking and they are going to be interested straight away in this starter activity. You can, of course, use mobile phone quizzes. Um, apps such as Socrative, uh, Kahoot, Menti have got some fantastic games uh, and quizzes which you can create, uh, create. And this is going to be really, really important. OK, so if you uh, have a starter activity, which they do immediately, then this is going to, to set your level lesson off to a flyer okay and of course it's going to create less distractions as well so my advice is to get started straight away the starter activity might only last somewhere between five to ten minutes but if it's presented clear um, with the instructions on the board then this is going to help your behavior management skills Another key area which you could look into is creating a classroom contract, okay? Many learners um, are quite resentful towards a teacher telling them the rules, okay, that they need to follow. However, if you um, ask your learners to create um, a classroom contract of rules that they need to follow, then this is going to create a better atmosphere OK, as you can see, just on our screen, we have a, a list of learner rules, OK, which has been um, which has been signed on perhaps um, a poster or flip chart paper. So all the class can get involved within this activity. They list down the do's, the don'ts of the, the classroom for all learners to, to follow. And this makes a classroom contract. OK, so this contract can be posted on the wall for all to see. It can be highlighted. It can be laminated. OK, and learners can formally sign this this contract. OK, and 
therefore, if a learner breaks a rule, then you can show the learner on the wall uh, what we all signed perhaps at the start of the year or at the start of the, the, the class. OK, I always think it's good to have um, a teacher contracts as well so you could ask learners to create a, a, a contract that you the teacher must follow so you could turn this activity on its head you could have the learner contract and the teacher contract so this is where the rules that the teacher must follow so things such as marking work on time giving supportive feedback uh, making lessons interesting all of those could feature on uh, the rules that a teacher should follow as well so give it a try you might be surprised by this classroom contract my next uh, piece of advice is to delegate classroom activities, okay? So this, again, is um, a an approach whereby it's focused on teamwork, okay? So you as a teacher, you don't need to do everything. You don't need to hand out the books. You don't need to set up the equipment. Why not give those those roles, those, those tasks to learners, okay? So you could get perhaps a learner to read, okay, in front of the class they could read a paragraph um you could create perhaps a classroom rep okay um and i always think if you if you use the language such as team come on team let's do this together um then you're going to create this this harmonious atmosphere okay so i always think it's important to give learners roles and of course you can you can uh, delegate these activities you can change the roles lesson by lesson but don't let yourself do all of the hard work why not lean on your learners to to really um to break up the lesson and give them some tasks to help the setup um, of the lesson and also that's the same for for collecting in equipment as well you can get your learners to help you to to collect in equipment as well so i think that is a way to create a really cohesive atmosphere and it learners are going to be thankful for you as well for giving them these individual tasks my next uh, golden rule um, in helping you to create a supportive atmosphere is, of course, enthusiasm for your subject. Uh, enthusiasm is, of course, contagious. If you can teach a subject with passion, enthusiasm, then this is going to rub off on other learners. OK, um, I always advise that if you can have quizzes, you can have games uh, which are relevant to your uh, your subject specialism, then this is going to create an inclusive atmosphere and it's going to be fun. Learners are going to be more relaxed as well. OK, so think of uh, a children's TV presenter, for example. They are enthusiastic and uh, they're fun. They're engaging. So try to be an advocate for your own subject. OK, regardless of the lesson time, the date, try to be as enthusiastic as possible okay and this is going to really rub off rub off on your your learners okay so try to be a fun and passionate teacher when there are times of conflict and confrontation and it does happen within teaching and training okay perhaps a learner really um is is angry upset okay and they perhaps are reluctant to, to get involved with any classroom activity. So sadly, this does happen. You do need to prepare for this um, as a learner. OK, now it's best to avoid direct conflict here. OK, um, so just remain calm and just to say to the learner, OK, can you just please leave the room? OK, um, just ask them to just to go stand outside and give it five, ten minutes. OK, you could um, give the rest of the class an activity to do. They could perhaps be watching a video where you step outside when the time is right and just talk to the learner one on one. Once again, just keep calm here and just say to the learner, OK, um, why why are we feeling upset? So we're just asking them just on a one to one level um, what has gone, what's gone wrong? OK, perhaps ask them why they're feeling in a certain way and just be non-judgmental here just to find out the facts about what has happened. OK, usually the learner will apologize. OK, and they might have misunderstood a question. 
um they've they've been upset for some reason and we're just going to find out the facts if you feel the time is right just reintroduce them to the room okay or you could escalate it further perhaps you could speak to a manager to get some further advice as well but my golden rule here is to avoid conflict okay if you are going to challenge the learner um, and if they, they're angry, this could perhaps lead to a pack mentality of other learners jumping on the side of the learner who is upset. And that's a bad thing. We want to avoid that. So diffuse the situation, ask them for a chat outside, and hopefully that can lead to a peaceful uh, resolution as well. Okay. My next um, advice uh, with promoting um, a positive atmosphere is to have a seating plan. OK, so seating plans are tried and tested methods for, for helping to create a supportive atmosphere. OK, the good thing about a seating plan is you can break up uh, friendship pairs. You can get learners to work together um, who might not do um on a on a regular basis so you could obviously have the names um on the board once you come in so you make the seating plan when learners come in there might be a reluctant to, to sit to perhaps a new person they might sort of complain just ignore that just to say please we're going to trial something new let's give it a go and you can see the classroom dynamics as well so ultimately they're going to be uh working uh, with with new peers and this is a good thing to do that they're going to be working with someone new they're going to be working with fellow classmates um, and also you can see the class dynamics and hopefully this is going to be more of a structured uh, setting there's going to be less off task chatter as well so do have a go of of a seating plan and of course you can mix up the seating plan once every uh, few weeks as well so learners are generally working with different people within the classroom environment um, over time as well so do trial the the seating plan methods um, another way to promote um, a supportive atmosphere and and to reduce any um, behavior issues is peer marking and and feedback now this is a way uh, which teachers um, ask learners to, to give feedback uh, to perhaps a, a peer or friends within the class they might swap over assignments they might swap uh tests that they've uh just written it could be giving feedback on a performance it could be giving feedback on their their learners coursework anything like that so they they're giving each other feedback now this is a way to help learners to focus okay and just to be mindful about how to to give feedback OK, it's going to improve their confidence, their communication skills, empathy, all of those soft key skills, which is important. OK, and if they're having the opportunity of giving feedback, well, this is going to make them um, more aware of their, their, their colleagues or their, their, their fellow partners progress as well. And ultimately, this task is going to promote a positive uh, group dynamic as well. Now, a couple of um, bits of advice here for, for this activity is to always to show learners perhaps the grading criteria that they're working towards. Um, so perhaps a mark scheme if they're marking their fellow learners work and also give a strict time frame for this activity as well to review the work so they're not rushing or taking their time. But please do invest within peer marking and peer feedback. I think you'll see the, the benefits of it uh, with promoting a, a positive atmosphere. Now, the next uh, criteria, the next uh, piece of advice that I would recommend is, is mobile phones. OK, everyone has one and these can be the, the Achilles heel as a teacher. Learners, of course, can often be distracted by mobile phones within a lesson. And you need to be crystal clear on the mobile phone policy. Now, what you could do at the start of the lesson is give everyone one minute to send that final text, that final WhatsApp message. And then they have to turn off their phone. They have to put it inside their bags underneath the table 
and it's not going to be touched and therefore you'll have everyone's full focus so i think that's an important thing to send your final message and it's done okay this is a mobile free zone okay i'm going to have your full focus for the lesson Alternatively, um, you can ask learners to use their mobile phones, uh, especially if you're using uh, Kahoot, uh, Socrative, those mobile phone apps, devices. OK, and that's fine. But at the start of the lesson, you need to be crystal clear whether phones are going to be in use 100 percent or not. OK, and ask them to turn them off and put them away so they can't be tempted or distracted by them. OK. The next um, criteria we are looking at is keeping learning, keep it, keep learning active, excuse me. So keeping learning active is an assured way to keep learners engaged within your lessons and to ultimately behave as well. As we know, learners have a blend of different learning styles. They could be a visual learner, uh, oral learner. They could focus on read and writing. That could be their preferred style. Or they could be a kinesthetic learner or a blend of all four. They could be multimodal. So therefore, having a range of different activities, okay, is going to keep them engaged on task. And my advice here is to endorse in things such as group work, paired work, presentations, video tasks. But if we keep learning quite on the go with lots of pace, there's there's really isn't going to be an opportunity to be off task. OK, an honest question you've got to ask yourself is, is learning fun? OK, if learning is boring, then this is going to uh, get learners to switch off. So my advice is make sure that your activities are pacey. OK, they're engaging and also have a, a role with the learner. OK, so give them an allotted role as well. Confidence is a, a big part for, for any teacher. And this is going to really help you um, to essentially keep your learners in check. OK, a confident teacher is something that does come over time as well. And my advice here is to get to know your subject. Uh, if you're a subject specialist, if you know your, your subject content, this is going to promote your own self-assurance okay if you're not confident with the the subject matter then learners are going to see through that and then they're going to play up and it's going to um not be good within the lesson okay so my advice is to stay up to date with your subject developments uh practice your teaching methods read up on your subject and also to observe fellow teachers and colleagues as well and they can of course observe you and give feedback as well if you're a subject specialist trust me you'll be super confident and you can walk into your classroom with a smile on your face, looking forward to the lesson um, and just being an advocate um, of your, your subject specialism as well. So please just try to do your homework on your subject. And trust me, you'll become confident uh, with the subject that you are teaching. Nonverbal communication. Um, I think this is absolutely vital for any confident teacher or trainer. And of course, it's important to protect your own voice to support your longevity as a teacher. OK, so nonverbal communication is a powerful tool for any teacher and can really help the flow of the lesson. So eye contact with learners, OK, is enough to get their attention. So the, the well-known teacher stare, of course, OK, that you do look at your learner, perhaps if they're off task, you don't need to say anything just to get their attention and they will come back onto uh, task as well. But of course, facial expressions. Uh, a raised eyebrow can look surprised as a teacher um, and it can get learners back on track as well. Positive body language, as I mentioned as well, is, is vital. So try to be positive, open, um, not having your arms folded or crossed, perhaps. We're trying to be a positive teacher here, but do try to protect your voice. OK, if learners are off task, try to get them back on task through nonverbal communication. OK, it's very, very vital. that We do look after ourselves as teachers or trainers and do trial uh, your nonverbal communication skills here. 
One of my favorite uh, methods of, of behavior management is a concept called the drive-by. Now, this is a technique used where a teacher might be walking uh, through their classroom. If they see a learner off task, they might tap the desk without saying anything. And this is going to help the learner to get back on track. So let's say if a learner is talking to one of their friends or is on their mobile phone, the mobile phone's underneath the desk, you could tap on the desk. And that is a signal for them to get back on track with their work or their task. And the good thing about a drive-by is you don't need to say anything, okay? You are protecting your voice. You're not distracting others, okay? You're not saying or, or shouting to the learner, get back with your work. You're not saying anything like that. You're just tapping on the desk and they know it's time to get back on track with their uh, coursework or their task. Okay, so the drive-by is something that you can you can adopt, and it's a great way to refocus learners. This gentle reminder. Voice projection. Okay, voice projection is a key way to essentially get your learners to to be focused as well. So if you're quite monotone as a teacher, if you say or if you speak in the same tone of voice, learners can become disengaged. They could daydream. They can be unfocused. If you have a varied pitch or tone as a teacher, this is going to keep them interested. And my advice is to do lots of questions within your lesson to keep them focused. A typical uh, questioning method is to pose a question, to pause, and then to pick a learner as well. Now, my advice is to ask one question to each learner in every lesson as well. Okay, so it's great to have a, a blend of nominated questions and open questions as well. Trust me, by asking questions, this is going to keep the room focused as well. It's going to help the flow of your lesson. But voice projection um, please keep it varied if you can. It might take some time for you to, to become confident within this area, and that is absolutely fine as well. We're making excellent progress through our video. I hope it's been helpful to, to date as well. Make sure you do subscribe to our channel to receive the latest videos and alerts from the team here at TrainAid. Now, the next um, uh, behavior management advice I'd like to give you is stretch and challenge activities. Okay. Now, stretch and challenge are activities or activities um, are for those learners who might have achieved um, the the work. They might have completed a task, and these are, are tasks. These are um, this is this is work that learners can do while the rest of the class catches up. OK, so when you see perhaps a stretch and challenge logo, this is where learners might take stock and they might think, oh, I'd like to go for the stretch and challenge activity today. So you can see it as a, a competitive element. And this is a good thing. So you're stretching learners, their perceived abilities as well. So this could be if you finish a task, you might have to, to read a, a further chapter within a textbook. It could be looking at a, a video. It could be watching another video to do with your subject specialism. It could be simply supporting another learner to help them catch up, to bring them up to speed with the task as well. But by having um, a, a stretch and challenge activity, activity this is going to help learners not to become bored it's going to push them further and this is going to be help help your behavior management skills okay by having these these supplementary tasks available to learners so have a think about some stretch and challenge activities relevant to your own subject specialism as well The next step is to be consistent as a teacher. This is very important. So a consistent teacher will promote uh, key values of fairness, um, empathy, support for all learner. And this is going to, to promote trust. It's going to obviously really help the learners to understand that you are a consistent and, and fair teacher. If you are inconsistent as a teacher, it's only going to create to create division, problems, and this could lead to fallout and complaints. So if you're seen as a subjective teacher, 
we don't want that that's that's a bad thing so once again have your ground rules uh your non-negotiables um printed on the wall for all learners to see now if there is obviously uh an issue we can simply just point to the wall and say i'm sorry this is not me um these are the the rules i don't make them okay so they are there for all to see okay so it's very important that we we do that okay and this is going to promote a consistent uh teacher approach so of course be consistent as a teacher and don't be swayed by learner excuses be quite hard line okay you might have to let learners down but it's for the good of the group so being consistent um, is absolutely vital as well okay just uh moving on avoid shouting or yelling OK, an excellent teacher is one who stays in control of their emotions. They don't rise to any disruptive teacher. So shouting or yelling can make you appear to be weaker. Um, it could make you appear to be out of control. And this can di diminish uh, learners respect for you as a teacher. This is a bad thing. We don't want to yell. We don't want to shout. We want to remain in control. If your lesson is taking a nosedive, it is. It happens. Okay. If um if 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 you know if if a lesson is is not going well, the 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 least thing you want to do is to shout or yell. Okay. Try just to get through to the the end of your lesson. Mistakes happen as a teacher. Trust me. Um and write down what had happened the experience talk to your colleagues about it okay write up your experience okay and address it within the next lesson you could talk to your class the next lesson about how you felt or what happened and to to say the things that happened and to make sure that these don't happen again but whatever you do as a teacher don't shout okay don't yell okay if things aren't going well stay in control they can be resolved within the next lesson you could even invite your manager your head of department to stand with you at that next lesson and talk about the experiences what went wrong within the lesson throw it back to the learner and say you know what happened uh, why did we all behave in that particular way and that way we can resolve matters uh, in a cohesive way but always try to stay in control as well on a positive note, praise learners. Okay, let's get back onto the positive route here. Praise. Now, praise is a way of promoting a supportive atmosphere. Absolutely. So praise, praise and encouragement is contagious and can help uh, support learners within a positive um classroom atmosphere it doesn't have to be all to do with the lesson it could be praise to do with learners interests or goals it could be saying very well done on achieving your your first 10k okay for learners for example ran a, a charity race praise them as they walk through the door you know just say very well done um, on your hobby your interest this is going to make you feel and show that you're more human um, as a teacher it shows you're compassionate as well um, try not to over praise learners okay have a have an equal balance and try to praise all learners over time so you're consistent you're providing praise to to everyone here as well okay but once again try to be positive praise them for their achievements okay and when they're working well ignore the small talk OK, learners might moan. They might say, why have we got to do this activity when they're first introduced to a task? OK, just ignore the small talk. OK, just ignore it. OK, you can use humor to diffuse the situation to get them back on track. OK, oh, is, you know, is this activity really that hard? OK, I know that you can do your best with this with this task. OK, let's give it a go. And once again, give show your enthusiastic sides okay and they will eventually say right i'm going to focus on this task now and just with a little bit of encouragement learners can settle into a classroom and don't even engage with any complaints you can ignore it you can ignore the small talk and as a group we say right collectively we're going to work towards our aim of the lesson these are our objectives let's go 
Okay, so emphasize a we approach, a team approach, and this is going to help to get learners on board. Okay, so just ignore any pettiness, any any silly comments. Does it's not worth your time? Let's get started on the activity. So that's my advice: ignore any small talk because you have got to teach your lesson. You've got to obviously work through your aims and objectives there. So it's very important that you're not phased by any learner small talk or anything um, that they want to try and get out of the, the activity. No, we're going ahead as one. Mix up the activities and resources. Okay, so it's very important as a teacher, if you're using a scheme of work, this can help you to identify what activities and what resources you've used within lessons on a regular basis. By using the same resources, the same teaching methods can become stale and boring if you're using them again and again and again. So a good way of keeping learners engaged um, and focused um, is to, to make sure that you're doing something new, dynamic, um, and try to switch up your classroom activities as well. Now, within the lesson, if things aren't going well, if learners don't get an activity, try to try to take a step back and to understand what's going wrong mix it up and um try to um try to think on your feet a little try to adapt your your lesson in your activities if things aren't working well so don't try to force activities if they're not working try to adapt these as they come but do keep a scheme of work and that's going to help you to mix up these activities and it shows that you're an interactive and engaging teacher as well Along with the activities, think of the time of day as well. So learners might be focused at different times of the day, and this can influence your, your classroom activities as well. So if um, learners are quite engaged on a Monday morning, you could set them some recap activities to get them focused on the week ahead. Friday afternoon, learners might be quite fatigued. They might be um, a little bit disengaged. So try and do something fun, such as a quiz. They could watch a video activity. Um, so think about the time of the day, okay? The time of day might affect the learner's focus, their behavior, and try to try to get the best activity for the time of day during that week, for example. OK, so just use your learners focus, their energy levels. OK, and try to be quite uh, clever as a teacher here. And I'm sure your learners will thank you for that, for doing quite an interesting lesson during a certain time of the day or week. So try to have a think about when learners are at their best. OK, and try to perhaps give learners some choice on the activities that they are going to be doing as well. A key concept uh, within uh, the world of behavior management is learner lateness. Excuse me. Now, this can be a real issue um, and it's, it, this can disrupt, it can derail your lesson. OK, my advice is when a learner is late, ask the learner to knock on the door and for the learner to wait outside. Now, you don't need to go and address them immediately. OK, when there is a break in the lesson, just calmly ask the learner why they are late. OK, so you can perhaps set the, the group, your class an activity whilst you go outside of the door. You have a chat to the learner and ask them why are you late? OK, what are the reasons? And uh, you should let them into the lesson, but ask perhaps a fellow classmate to, to tell them what they missed and also for uh, for them, the, the classmate, to help them to try to get the learner back up to speed um, with what they've missed as well. Now, it's very important um, that you document the lateness, and that is hard evidence as well. And any work that has been missed due to lateness, the learner has to complete that for homework. So they're not left off the hook. They have to catch up. OK, so it's very important that they do this in their own time as well. OK, now, if a learner is late again and again, then, of course, you raise that with a line manager. Perhaps you can have a meeting with the learner to see what you can do, what you can implement to, to resolve this lateness, this punctuality issue. 
but please make sure learners stay outside and they don't just walk into your lesson. Okay, that's a bad thing. So learners should knock on the door and wait till you're ready as a teacher to address them. Just talking about administration, follow up. This is my next key rule as well. Okay, it's crucial for any teacher or trainer to follow up with issues on behavior, attendance, lateness, okay, failure to keep um, administration together or to document any issue will only allow for learners to repeat this unwanted behavior as well. They can think that they can get away with it, but actually, no. If you're keeping records of learner lateness, homework not being completed disruptive behavior that is ammunition that you can sit down with the learner and your line manager or even a parent and talk about when these uh these incidents occur as well if you don't have this then you don't have your your ammunition ammunition you don't have evidence and that's a problem okay so do try and be quite meticulous with writing down when these incidents occurred okay so very important when we're going to any meeting that we have these these notes and hard evidence as well any type of misbehavior needs to be followed up immediately okay so do speak to your line manager the senior leadership team your colleagues about this behavior and uh, do keep a record of it as well very important we do that now, another uh, interesting way in which that we can uh, start our lesson uh, in, a, in a positive way is a concept called a think forward activity. Now, this is essentially a starter activity, but it's delivered by the learner. So a think forward activity could be anything from perhaps a show and tell activity. It could be getting a learner to introduce a topic to the class. It could be getting the learner to come to the front of the lesson at the very start and reading something, okay? Um, and it's getting the learner to take a part of the lesson, okay, as a starter. And this is going to promote their confidence. So um, a learner could perhaps read in front of the class. It could be uh, talking about a hobby for five minutes. But this is something that all learners can do with time. And it's replacing you as a teacher uh, delivering a starter activity and getting a learner to, to, to deliver perhaps their think forward activity okay um so try to keep this relevant to you okay and your subject specialism but why not get the learner to host the starter activity and you could do this again and again over a period of time so as soon as uh, all learners come into a class one learner has to host this this initial activity this starter activity and trust me this is going to help the flow of the lesson and it's going to reduce any behavior management issues as well. Packing away equipment. So um, my advice with promoting a cohesive uh, teaching atmosphere is for learners to take pride in their classroom, to take pride within their workstation, okay? And this is something which is very important, of, of course, within their careers, uh, they have to look after their, their own working environment as well. So um, give yourself a five to 10 minute window at the end of the lesson uh, before the bell rings. All learners have to pack up equipment. Uh, you have to count in equipment. You have to, of course, recap the aim and objectives, okay, and, and debrief the learners. But make sure that learners are looking after the equipment, they're keeping their workstations clean, um, that they're taking pride in the teaching area as well, okay? If they're not bothered by the classroom um, environment, they're leaving it untidy, well, that's not a good thing because you're going to have to clean up. And it's also disrupting the flow of the lesson. That's you know, it's a bad thing. We want learners to, to really take pride within the classroom environment. But give yourself five, 10 minutes of uh, a, a debrief time for learners to pack away and to look after the equipment as well. Now, my next uh, advice is learner feedback. Now, this goes hand in hand um, with uh, you as a teacher promoting uh, a good relationship with your learners now if learners feel that they can raise their voice and give you feedback then this is going to be a positive 
um, impact. This is going to lead to a positive relationship with you and your learners. Now, what I mean by this is that if you're giving learners a voice to give you feedback on how they're enjoying the lesson and, of course, how you can improve as a teacher, then this is going to, to really help them to open up. And this is going to uh, help a positive relationship between you and your learners. Though, so things such as sticky notes, for example, it could be online surveys, paper-based feedback forms, is going to help learners open up, and it's going to think get the learners to think, oh, actually, my teacher actually cares about how I'm feeling and within the classroom. Okay, so I think it's a really powerful thing if learners have a voice. This is going to help them to to behave. It's going to help them to open up, and I think that it's going to generate some honest feedback that you can of course change your own teaching methods um, to be more supportive to change your way of teaching anyway um, I think if you if you don't have learner names then this is going to create more honest feedback but by saying how could I improve as your teacher I tell you what that's a great uh, way that you can form a better relationship with your learners and this is going to solve uh, many behavior-based problems um challenge learner thoughts okay now if um a learner says something which is quite negative okay perhaps it prompts other learners to laugh okay and it's quite an unsavory comment okay why not pull the learner up on that and ask them why are they thinking in a particular way what have they seen um perhaps in social media or the news to make them think in a certain way so if they have perhaps a negative outlook um don't just shut them off or shout at them perhaps perhaps challenge them where have you seen that why are you thinking that what are the what what's the evidence surrounding your thought process there so really challenge them to to think about why are they working it why are they thinking in a negative way and you can almost have a debate with them and this is going to be an adult conversation and this is going to help the learner to self-reflect and hopefully they can think in a more positive way okay um and that is going to really sort of you know make other learners sort of stand up and think you know what you know that was a silly comment i'm not going to follow their their lead there and it's going to create an adult learning environment now, if a learner has said something totally unacceptable, which is uh, it, which is breaking rules, okay, ask them, um, right, take a step outside, okay, once again, give them a 10-minute window, okay, and then that's when you step outside and say, you cannot say that in the classroom, and ask them why they're thinking that again. And then perhaps speak to a manager as well about the seriousness about what they've said, but try to try to challenge learners on on their negative thought pattern. Hopefully, we can turn around their their viewpoints to to make them think in a more positive way. Now, my last advice is reward. So learners do enjoy tangible rewards. Okay, so traditionally sweets, uh, gift cards, things like that. Um, of course, they're going to work well. But my advice is, is why not issue um, things which are relevant to your subject specialism? Um, so you can you can create things you can create a certificate you can give out stationery for example or it could be things which are relevant rewards which are relevant to your subject specialism or your or your working role as well so try to go for something which you don't have to uh to pay out for so you know don't uh, buy rewards from your own salary if you've got some money from your department okay by all means but there's no need to buy something um, out of your own pocket but try to keep resources um, to do with your subject specialism and keep them relevant as well but rewards are a, a great way of helping learners to stay on track and to reduce any behavior management issues Wow, uh, we have covered 30 ways in which you as a teacher can uh, to help to create a positive classroom atmosphere and a, a way to reduce behavior management issues. Now, if you're interested in a career within teaching, we host a level three award in education and training, level four certificate in education, and a level five diploma in education and training. So please get in contact if you have any questions. Now, once again, thank you ever so much for much for watching please do like and subscribe to the video 
and just ring the bell as well for uh, an Instagram post. Thank you very much for watching and we hope to see you on one of our courses. Many thanks.